Hi guys, welcome to Cocinando con los Dewitts. Today I'm going to show you how I make this delicious capirotada. This is kind of like a fruit cake that we make during Lent, but you can make it for any occasion and it's so delicious and it's so easy to make. So I'm going to show you how to make it. Some of the torta bread um, in slices and let it kind of dry overnight in a tray like this for 24 hours and then the next day when the bread is dry we can start working on our capirotada okay my bread already sat for 24 hours on a tray so it's kind of dry now so we can start making our capirotada the ingredients that we're gonna need for the capirotada are raisins these are just half a cup. So half a cup of raisins, half a cup of peanuts, half a cup of um, shredded coconut, half a cup of um, plums. These are like the dry plums, I guess. They come in a bag. And two apples, two bananas. We're gonna use some oil because we're gonna fry our bread a little bit. And we're gonna use some of these colorful sprinkles to decorate our bread. And then we're gonna use a cinnamon stick. And then we're gonna use this piloncillo that is like unrefined cane sugar that has a really good flavor. And those are basically all the ingredients. I mean, we're gonna use some water too to boil the piloncillo and the cinnamon. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start with the first step. The first step is to put four cups of water in a pot and then we're gonna put our cinnamon stick in there. And then we're gonna put one of the piloncillos. And we are going to let it boil for around 10 minutes so all the sugar, the piloncillo melts, and all the flavor from the cinnamon comes out. Okay, let's get this ready. Okay, I'm gonna add my piloncillo and this is how it looks. Remember, it's just like unrefined, not refined sugar and it's cane sugar, so it smells delicious. So we're just gonna put it there and we're gonna let it boil for around 10 minutes. Okay, let's take it to the Okay, guys, while my cinnamon and cane sugar piloncillo is boiling, we're gonna start frying our bread a little bit. So I just put oil in this pan and I'm gonna start just frying a little bit this bread from both sides. And a lot of people don't fry it. They just like kind of roast it in a pan. But I like to fry it because it gives it a little um, flavor. And it's like a very unique flavor that I like. So we're gonna be frying our bread, okay? So let's start. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for my oil to get hot so we can start frying it. Um, I didn't put a lot of oil in my pan because the bread is dry and it's going to absorb, absorb a lot of oil. And I don't want my bread too oily. So I just put a little bit of um, oil and I'm going to start frying the bread. And then if I need more, I'm going to keep adding oil little by little. Okay, my oil is hot now. So I'm going to start putting the bread there and... It doesn't have to be completely fried. I just want the both of the sides to be a little bit roasted. So I'm just gonna put as many as I can fit in my pan. And then I'm just gonna let them sit for a little bit. And then I'm gonna start flipping them so the other side cooks. You can hear that the bread is starting to fry. So, I'm gonna keep adding more. Okay, I'm gonna start flipping all my bread so it gets oil from both sides. As you, as you can see, it's starting to like toast a little bit, fry with the oil. See, that's the color that we want. But I'm turning it. If not one, of, one side, it's gonna absorb all the oil. So I want both sides to get kind of that rose color, a little bit of oil and fry. So I'm gonna turn them around before one side absorbs all the oil. And look at that beautiful color that it's getting already. Okay, I'm gonna keep frying my pan. 
Okay, since I said I'm gonna keep frying my pan, I need to let you know that pan means bread in Spanish, just in case you didn't know. And sometimes my Spanglish just comes out. <laughs> so pan is bread. Okay, it's getting that nice color that I like, but I'm gonna let it sit a little bit more. So it cooks a little bit more and changes color a little bit more. Okay, my bread has that color that I like and it looks like a toast, and it sounds like a toast, and starting to smell delicious too. So I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing with all my bread, and I'm just gonna get it all done. While I'm doing this, remember, my cinnamon and cane sugar, piloncillo, is boiled. started to boil, so I'm gonna lower the fire a little bit. And we are going to let it boil for 10 minutes. Um, the piloncillo is completely dissolved now, so I'm just gonna let it boil so the cinnamon um, boils a little bit more and all the flavor comes out. Smells delicious and looks delicious. I wanted to show you the beautiful color of my piloncillo and cinnamon. I'm still gonna let it boil for the 10 minutes, but look how beautiful it looks and it smells delicious. Okay guys, I'm done frying my bread and it looks, smells delicious and it has that crunchy texture of a toasted bread. So let's keep going to our next step, which is to get the fruit ready for our capirotada. Okay guys, we're going to start with the apple. The apple, I just cut the top and the bottom and then I'm just going to start cutting its slices just this way. So I'm just gonna go like this and start cutting the little slices. And um, I don't peel my apples. I like them just like that, but you have that option if you wanna peel the apples, that works too. Okay, I'm gonna slice my apple. Okay, I'm doing my second apple now, and just remember to do the slices as thin as possible, as thin as you can. And I'm done with this half, I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna start cutting the other half. Okay guys, I'm done slicing my apple. Look how beautiful it looks. Now I'm gonna go and check my um, cinnamon and my piloncillo, the cane sugar, because 10 minutes have passed, so we have to go check our sugar and piloncillo. Okay, it's ready. It's been boiled for 10 minutes, so I'm gonna turn off my stuff and I'm gonna let it cool down because we want to wait until it's cooled down to use it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna keep working on my fruit. Okay, now I'm going to start slicing my um, bananas and I'm just gonna peel them and I'm just gonna slice them in little circles. Okay guys, I'm slicing my banana and I'm just slicing it in little circles. Um, I'm trying to make them thin, but not too thin, so around this thickness. Okay, I'm gonna finish um, slicing my banana. Okay, I'm done slicing my two bananas. So now I'm gonna slice the prunes. Yes, I'm just gonna cut them like in four long pieces or like, I'm just gonna cut it in four. Um, you can use the whole prunes, but I like to have smaller pieces, so I'm just gonna cut them in four. Okay guys, I'm done chopping, cutting in four pieces my prunes. I guess they're dry, dry plums. And um, I'm just gonna put them back in the container. Some of them were small enough that I only cut them in half, so it's up to you how big you want the pieces. This is how I like them, not too big, not too small, so they are ready. I'm just gonna put them back in the container. Okay, guys, I have everything ready for our capirotada. I'm just waiting for the piloncillo and um, cinnamon that we boil to cool down a little bit. It's important that we don't use it when it's too hot because if not, when we dip the bread, it's gonna, um, the bread is just gonna dissolve. So I have my bread ready, my apple, the bananas, the raisins, the coconut, the um, prunes or plums, and peanuts, and some of these colorful sprinkles. And a container where I'm gonna be putting my capirotada. Okay guys, we're gonna start making our capirotada. One of the things that I like to do is to dip my bread in the cinnamon and piloncillo broth that we made and then put it on top and we're going to start layering, layering this down 
The other way that people do it is they start putting the bread in here and then they get a spoon or a container and they put the broth on the top. It's up to you what you like to do, what is easier for you, but I like dipping my bread in my broth. It's just easier, I don't know, better for me. I feel like it gets more flavor and it doesn't take as long. So we're just gonna do that process right here. As you can see, I already did one layer of my capirotada, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, I'm dipping my bread in the cinnamon, sugar, broth, tea, water that we boil, and I'm just gonna layer it here. And I'm gonna try to layer it in a way that my whole container is like covered. So I am gonna put it right there and I'm gonna keep going with this process until it's full. And this process just keep, keeps repeating. So if you have more bread, you keep doing more layers and more layers. Okay, all my bread is there. Now we're gonna put our fruit. We're gonna add the apple. This time I'm just making this container, this little container. I usually make a lot and my kids love it. Everybody loves it. But this time I'm just gonna make a little bit. Hopefully it's gonna last just for a couple days and then I'm gonna make more if we need more. Okay, I have my apple there. Now I'm gonna add the banana and try to cover the whole surface. So if you want to get a slice, a piece of the, of the capirotada, you make sure you get all the ingredients. So just try to put them everywhere. And it doesn't matter what order you do it. I like to do it like this. You can do the banana first, the apple first, or the other ingredients first. I just like to do my apple first and then my banana and then the other ingredients. Okay, I have all the banana there. Let me add the last pieces that I have here. Now I am going to add my raisins. Just everywhere. Try to cover everything. Try to put them everywhere. I guess it was a perfect amount. Then I'm gonna add the shredded coconut. I got the sweet coconut, so it's gonna have such a good flavor. Please remember to subscribe to my page to follow my recipes and activate the bell and invite everybody to my channel, please. Now I'm gonna add the prunes. We call them ciruelas pasas. And I'm gonna add them everywhere. And then I'm gonna add the peanuts. Like I said, I bought these peanuts that were roasted already. You can buy the unsalted, unroasted, just the plain peanuts, and that works too. It's up to whatever you want to get. And now, the last thing that I like to add is the sprinkles. They are so colorful, and I'm gonna, we're gonna let this sit in the fridge for around an hour to two hours, just so it cools down, because I like to eat it cold. If you like to eat it warm, I guess you can eat it warm. But usually I put it in the fridge for around an hour. Look how beautiful it looks. Now I'm going to add some of this juice on the top. Not too much, but I'm going to add some. So all the ingredients kind of mix together, kind of melt together. And it has such a good flavor. And there it is, the delicious capirotada. Okay guys, um, my capirotada was in the fridge for a little bit more than an hour, so it's ready. If you can see all the colors and the flavors started mixing together, so let's cut a little piece and try it. Okay, let's get a little piece, cut a little piece of this capirotada and put it on our plate. And look at my capirotada, so delicious. I already cut a piece to try it and look at the bread. 
it's nice and soft and moist but it's not too soft it's just perfect delicious enjoy